Borough Council work session. Uh, welcome everybody to the Belfont Borough Council work session. No council action or making motions or approvals will be taking place during the work session. Do we have a trivia question? Vice President Barbara Dan. Mr. Bernier, I am very sorry, but I do not have a trivia question tonight. April <laughs> I wish. <laughs> All right. April Items for discussion. PSAB resolutions. I just quickly say these are this is the time of the year when we could it's optional but we could submit a resolution to the state boroughs association they have a conference in june they re, prior to that they review all resolutions submitted and then they're they're voted on by delegates from boroughs across the state so i put in information that uh, from previous years to give you examples of what has already been submitted so if you know if, or you want to discuss anything we can do that we only have a few minutes but we're happy to discuss that and i would make sure and you know, the concept is submitted to the boroughs association the deadlines i believe this wednesday was there anything decided at the countywide one on that i had to miss because i was leading something else at the same time uh, no we we failed to have a quorum at that meeting so we didn't discuss anything Uh, not yet we, we I checked with the boroughs Association there is some flexibility we will have to reschedule uh, find a time that works either via zoom or what have you find a time that works for a majority of our members here in Center County I would suggest that we put something out there to send them a note or something what their availability would be and if they'd rather just do it by zoom that's fine we're we're going to randy we were off friday <laughs> and today we focused on the council meeting so <laughs> but yes we're going to do exactly what you're saying all right next is the council chambers layout uh in particular you know we, we tried different setups with the tables the desks we're still getting used to the room you know we're, we're tweaking things as we go uh, we're looking for your feedback you know on how you what you prefer what you like or don't like including the position of the table location of the table in the room uh, you know we, we, we can still tweak things but once you know once we get it settled we like to say that's it and then if we have surplus items you know we'll look at maybe uh, getting rid of surplus items or what have you I'll start <laughs> I think uh, based on with our Spring Creek watershed meeting uh, Thursday morning uh, we set up from the podium here and turned this table around and then we talked to the folks out here and had it on the wall behind us or in front of us and it worked well the echoing was not bad at all in the, in the middle part and I'm thinking if you look at how you, how we are now, we're way back here trying to talk way out there. And if we could get this thing in the middle where we're looking out at the door as people come in and the chairs are up this way and a little bit, you know, a little bit more closer together, you know, less room going that way and using this room <clears throat> with the podium even staying where it's at now for people to come up and speak, I think would be fine. And you could still, you know, leave this here but use that if you're going to have somebody presenting something it would be behind council but i just think you know if it doesn't work from there maybe you still need to, to still do some dampening in here but i think i think like right now i can hear this you know echoes yes. throughout this and i didn't hear that on thursday morning yeah and we had 45 people in here uh, and similarly um when I was talking to some people who, who watched the Zoom or the PCN and just sitting here, so it's looking from both perspectives, having this little round table in this humongous room is, is it intimidating to some people and it's like, what are we hiding in, in this tight little circle? It, it doesn't feel right to me and what people were saying to me was that they, the echoing is a problem that they don't feel that they're part of the community with us way up here and them all down there. 
The wonderful thing you made me think of this. Uh, <clears throat> when I was looking at this on Thursday, I thought these long tables that we have sitting around could be where we sit mm -hmm. at, on those, at those tables. And this I'm, might go better. Go, let's go back across the street. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. yeah. um, I also attended the meeting last Thursday and sat in the audience on an aisle seat basically to view this arrangement from that perspective and from the back of the room this disappears you can't you can barely see the tops of people's heads the acoustics were okay unless somebody in the audience was having a cross conversation then I couldn't hear what was going on also the way the podium is staged right now it completely obliterates the view of this side of the council table so I like Randy's idea of maybe shifting things around a little bit so there's a, a shorter distance between us and the audience and also open this up somehow so that we're not this seems like a private conversation rather than a community meeting and can we go back to the old microphones that were flat things on the table those were belong to CNET they, they only work for CNET purposes but not for us to talk into the speakers it looks like we're short a couple of microphones correct I think because of the coziness we, we, we <laughs> eliminated amazing. a few okay okay we, because we, I think that would be a good idea yeah, we, if, we, if once we get it situated we can go back and everybody can have their own but we were just again experimenting great thank you mm -hmm. <clears throat> Anything else about the chamber's layout? Next is the compost facility. Mr. Holderman, do you have something on that? I'd like to continue the discussion on the layout because I don't think we resolved anything. <laughs> you had three, we had three different setups, one with the big tables or the big desks. Then the second one we had a square and then now this. Uh, the question that we want to know so we can finish this this isn't even finished yet we have the panels off because we're waiting to determine whether or not this council wants to keep this thing here or not so I heard Joanne say move it back over okay if we move it back over do we go back just to the way it was the second time because the first time you I heard it was everyone was too far away so we would like to have some consensus I think on the direction so we can get this resolved before the next as, meeting as I had said <clears throat> take these longer tables and put them up to this up for this wall where the council would sit. we have I think enough tables that would cover the folks that would sit there and maybe even bring it kind of out a little bit so everybody can be seen uh, front face instead of side face or back back of the heads and things like that but do we have enough for 13 would, chairs I think you do uh, what, 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 I, what I just picking up on what we're saying we can experiment with those two tables and then the the rectangular tables that we had prior to this table uh, for maybe the next couple meetings and you know location and just set this aside it's, this sounds like this isn't working so let's let's eliminate this as a possibility yeah, we can move the rectangular <laughs> yes. tables up they don't have to be back here yes That's it could be moved up to the yes. as far as you want. Yeah. That's what we're suggesting. Yeah, sure. I, I know you can get at least four people at a table. So, and you have three tables. So. All right. Well, that. And there may be another table like that sitting around somewhere. There, there may. So we'll we'll check uh, and see what we have. You know, go from there. But we'll we'll eliminate this kind of as a long-term possibility right. and start looking these at chairs however are great <laughs> <laughs> we, we kind of thought that uh, that's where you would go with the don, chairs. don liked them i i like those wooden chairs <laughs> <laughs> doesn't really matter are there more acoustic boards that they're installed there that's another thing the the final round was installed yes yeah, with the, the additional ones that were purchased are now in. For what we ordered. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not going, you know, we talked about not going above and beyond at the last meeting. So what we've ordered is now in. Now our sound guy is going to attend the meeting on the 15th and tweak things and that kind of thing. Uh, so, I think the speakers are mounted too hot. Yes. The sound guy. Yes. No, he said they're five feet higher than they should be. 
He said they so should. The design, they were five feet lower. And yeah, yes, yeah, so we're saying the same thing, That's yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Well, I think, Doug, what I think what we're saying is, is let's let Chaz come in on the 15th, I think it is, the next meeting, and I'd try to adjust the sound system to maximize the sound. And after that, if we still have this, if we still have this echo, we'll then the next step would be yeah. move the, the lower yeah. the uh, speakers yeah. five feet or six feet. Yes. If you're, if you think that's the, I mean, uh, it would save the time and cost of moving those if he can fix it just by adjusting the system. Maybe not. Maybe we, we'll need more. Yeah, it's a big room, Doug. Uh, we're not saying it isn't. We try to go conservative on how many and how much to spend. Uh, so that's where we're at. We can always add more if council approves more. Okay, Kent, now do you want me to talk about the compost? <laughs> <laughs> if you're good on the arrangement of the room. I think we can do some things here. All right. So. The, uh, the compost facility, what we were looking for is, as everyone knows, uh, we ended up purchasing bags, a bagging system with the last 902 DEP grant that we received. So uh, we're gonna probably begin bagging uh, compost. Uh, again, we'll mention during the meeting this Saturday, we're having anyone that comes and sees the, you know, to view what, you know, we have down at the, Musser Lane site now will have an opportunity to look at it and can walk away with a free bag of compost to see how they like it. Uh, but in the past, we've always allowed um, people that had pickup trucks and everything to come in and load a pickup truck for free. Uh, of course, we're charging, we're gonna be charging $5 a bag on the compost now. So I, I guess we just had questions and wanted to kind of come to council to get some direction on whether or not you know, we still want to continue with the free compost or just bag everything and, and go that direction. <clears throat> so just open for some thoughts. Mm -hmm. uh, all we're looking for is some uh, thoughts at this point. Well, and we can what put are it on the bags it. made out of? And um, it's the same type of material that you would find like at Lowe's or Home Depot. When is that you're, plastic? Is it uh, yeah. uh, Pimp or or what is it a cloth plastic? Track? Plas okay, it's plastic. And um, we have long given people a chance if they they want to fill out the back of their trunk of their car, they could come in for free. So is this charge of five dollars just to purchase the bag, or is that a charge to have one of our staff fill up a bag and give it to them? The bags will be filled. They'll be working on that all summer long. Um, so the idea is, is that we'll have a large quantity, and then when people want them, they would come to the borough, say, uh, you know, I want 20 bags of compost. They'll pay for it, and then they get out and pick it up. But if we do this, then there would no longer be people could come in with their truck and say, I just want to fill up a truck load full. We're not. We're not saying that. They, the question is, is you know, you can. You can do both if that's what council wants. We're looking for a policy on something other than the bags being filled. You know, we got that figured out. Five dollars a bag, they're filled for you. It's like going to Lowe's and getting a bag of mulch. Okay. Uh, we're looking at do we have a fee or is there should there be a fee if somebody wants to go in and self-serve, fill up their vehicle you know, however means with a shovel and fill it up and take a load of mulch. Should there be some kind of a charge for that or just let them go? How big are the bags? How much are they? Uh, they're about 35 pounds, Shauna. Oh, is that not on? Sorry. Would the bags be reusable? Do you know? No, once you open them up, uh, I mean, the way it goes through the the way that the way the bags go through the bagging uh, equipment, they get you know the compost will get dumped into the bag and then it goes across and kind of there's a heat strip that heats the top of the bag to seal it. Um, so once it, like a bag that you'd buy from Lowe's, once you open it, 
it's that's it. So if, if you're not buying a bag, Doug, here. If you're not buying a bag, then then you take your pickup truck or your five fifty gallon trash can and you fill it yourself, right? And then you haul it away. We're asking if yeah, you, and you want to know if we're going to charge for the yeah charge or allow. I'd what? say let them come. Okay. If they want to load your pickup with a flat shovel, go for it. And uh, if they want to buy the bag, buy the bag. Then they we pay for the bag. But if you're industrious enough to load your own truck uh, with a half a ton or three quarters of a ton of mulch, and I agree with Doug here because I think that's a good community service. It's I, there, I, it's available, let them have it if they're yeah. willing to do the manual labor to get it. How has it worked in the past? Wasn't it free for yeah, people to come in? Just like those? you're saying. Yeah. And it so wasn't abused that we know of. No, no so. I don't think so. The, actually, the bagging was, uh, the, the idea behind bagging was for those that didn't have a pickup truck, that there was still an option for them. Uh, if, we, if we continue to bag and we have extra, I mean, talking with the center county uh, refuse or recycling and refuse authority in the past they've taken other municipalities extra bags and help sell them so <clears throat> any any funds that we get will go right back into the refuse fund i'm going to ask the stupid question since we're early on yet uh, so if if a person comes in with their truck and they've got Two or three people with them, they just start throwing mulch in. What happens if they over, go over the weight of the, what the truck can haul? Do we need to do something with a li you know, liability issue, or you know, we're not responsible for how they loaded their truck? I, I'm just throwing it out there because it could happen, depending how much help they have to load. <clears throat> I'm not saying not to do it, but I'm just curious about that question. I don't have a good answer other than we have general liability on the property. But I mean, we, even our own staff had questions. What if somebody hurts themselves loading or, you know, has a medical issue? You know, are we going to be liable? I mean, there's always a possibility, but we, like I say, we're not negligent. We didn't, you know, we have, and we have general liability on the property. You know, we can do it as a, a couple, a season trial basis. And tweak things at the end of the season if you want to. Randy, I don't think it's a whole lot different than going to the uh, transfer station with a pickup truck and unloading the, the the stuff in your pickup truck and throwing it over the wall to be disposed of. And when you're doing that, sort of some liability. But um, <clears throat> I think once they leave the property and they're overloaded, it's, it would be the responsibility of the of the uh, vehicle operator, but that's just, I'm sure somebody could figure out a way to blame it on the borough. We don't have any signage, you know, r related to that. Uh, Maybe that would be the way to go. Just post signage, load at your own risk. Yeah, good idea. Anything else? All right, you're good. Yeah, that's great. Uh, yeah, we're good. That's very good. Any other comments for the work session? <laughs> that adjourns the Belfont work session.
the Belfont Borough Council business meeting. Start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Roll call, please. Mr. Bernier. Sorry. Mr. Bernier. Present. Mr. Brackbill. Present. Ms. Cleeton. Here. Ms. Dan. Here. Mr. Johnson. Present. Ms. McKean. Here. Ms. Purnell. Here. Ms. Sedgwick. Here. Ms. Tosti Vasey. Here. Mr. Larson. Here. Mayor Johnson. Here. <clears throat> Next is additions to the council business meeting. Anybody has any additions to the council meeting that we could consider? If not, we'll move on to public comment. If you have public comment and you're here tonight, please come up, state your name, the podium, and please keep your comments to three minutes. No public comment? No? All right. Anybody on council? I have a question. I know um, she's actually here, but we, I think we all received a letter about the accident on um, the intersection that we're considering putting the light in. I was just wondering if there was any um, updates on when that light might be installed. Sure, uh, we actually listed that on the agenda because I, oh, I, we, we got work. Yes, we, I'm we, sorry. we were notified of the accident, and of course, we're very sorry that to hear that. Uh, but we did make it a point to, to update our community as to that the status of that project. Uh, our design engineer, our engineer, traffic engineer, tells us that the project is nearing the end of the design phase and should be submitted to PennDOT for as a preliminary submission next week. So uh, the first phase was a survey phase, and now they're in design. They're finishing that. Uh, it'll be submitted to PennDOT for review, barring any questions, probably a little bit of back and forth. Uh, I believe the next phase would be going to uh, preparing a bid package and then going out to bid. So, uh, my we, apologies for missing that. I, no I must have skimmed and missed that part. No problem. I, I was going to bring it up because we, we were also, I also received a phone call about the accident. Thank you. Can I say one more thing since we don't do comment at the end? Sure. <laughs> um, I just wanted to wish my. Um, Brother-in-law Rodney, a happy bir belated birthday. And since it's April Fool's Day, I figured it was a good time to, to prank him a little bit on that. Mm -hmm. So, Ralph, what is that again? Yes. Uh, what, in layman's terms, where's the traffic Well, line? well in, in layman's terms, I mean, uh, this project has to go through certain phases. We have a special traffic-related engineer on board. Uh, it's, and the first phase was trying to do a, an updated survey of that intersection that was done and then uh, of course in the meantime data from previous accidents <clears throat> and those kinds of things have been looked at reviewed submitted to PennDOT and discussed with PennDOT uh, and they finished that phase and now they're in the design phase uh, the, the good news is we already have a turning lane there it's a relatively simple intersection to install a traffic light or traffic signal. Uh, but they're looking at that. They are coordinating with the schools project because uh, typically we're, we're, we know we're going to have two lights close by. So typically these lights talk to each other. You know, with electronics, we're making sure that, you know, that they are, everything's compatible. Uh, but there is some coordination with that project. It has to be uh, because they're running their own uh, traffic studies and all, the, all this gets submitted to PennDOT. So uh, they, t they tell me that you know, the school has submitted their data uh, just recently and now the design again can in, enter its final stages and go to PennDOT. PennDOT reviews everything, approves everything issues a what's called a highway occupancy permit at the end of the project and then we go we build a, a specification that for bidding and we go out to bid find a contractor install the light and then the lights op operational so it's, it's it's a lengthy process but that's what it what it involves 
Can I have a question yes. related to that? So we have two lights close together. Uh, the school board has submitted theirs to PennDOT. We've submitted or submitting ours to PennDOT. Will the two of these be timed to be done simultaneously? Or because we started ours earlier, will we be able to get this put in sooner rather than later? Uh, there's no reason they have to be done simultaneously. What we're doing, because we know the other light's coming, it's going to be later than ours. Is, as I say, the control panel will we'll be able to talk to the other control panel because these lights have to be in sync when it's all said and done. The timing of the lights have to work together. So uh, we're just making sure that our you know, control system is compatible with whatever the school puts in. And we get, they get advice from PennDOT on how to do that. And then it, maybe they make the box a little bit bigger so that there, you know, there's, there's room for adjustment if necessary. But uh, there's no need and there's no, there's no reason for us to hold up our project. And the, the school is not holding up the project. We can put our light in ahead of their light. And when they're getting close to the end of their project, they can put their light in. That's what, that's what I wanted to hear, and I'm sure that's what the public wanted to hear as well. Thank sure. you. Thanks, sure. <clears throat> Next on our agenda is communications, written. Now, the first one is just a report from the Center County Recycling and Refuse Authority. That's their February report for your information. The second, yes. I'm sorry. Oh. Next is the Center County Active Transportation Plan public engagement period, which begins March 19th and runs through May 3rd. The CCMPO invites you and the public to participate in filling out the survey and utilizing the web mapping application on the project's website, which is a long one. Yes, so what we'll do, to save you from trying to read that, Ken, <laughs> is we'll post this on our website. Uh, that it's available with, with this link. It's a very long, lengthy link, so, but we'll post it on our website so citizens can do the survey. Okay, again, that runs from March 19th through May 3rd. That's it for communications. Any questions? Next is the consent agenda. All items listed on the consent agenda are considered routine and will be acted upon by one single motion. Can I have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda? I'd actually like to pull the meeting minutes, if we could, please. And I'd like to pull the <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Easy. Just do a motion and a second, one at a time, Kent. Well, there's only two items. They, they, want, to break them want, yes. they want to break them up. Okay, so can I have a, a motion and a second to approve the council meeting minutes for February 20th, 2024? I'll make that motion. Thank you. Okay. Questions? Um, I wanted to um, make a comment on the original meeting minutes that were submitted to us for review before they were modified. There's a section on page two where there are I guess it's one long sentence that was deleted. And um, just thinking about that, I was kind of hoping in the future that maybe this, the office staff could notate things that are being deleted from the original minutes typed up, maybe with a, a strikeout, and maybe things that are being added by a council member with maybe a different color or something so that we can see what things are being changed. Because um, I, I believe the sentence that was <coughs> taken out should still stay. And I can read the sentence to you if you like. This is under the uh, North Penn Street um, situation. The sentence that was taken out was, it was also suggested that council should trust the professionals who are hired to complete these projects, that the projects will be completed appropriately and responsibly, and the council should trust the borough staff is thorough in their research of proposed projects. And I see no reason that that should have been taken out because that was discussed. And I think it's important for us to keep remembering that there are professionals that are working on these projects that we need to trust them to make the correct decisions. So 
So I would like to leave that sentence in there. And I oppose that because if you look at that clearly, we have a policy uh, to not uh, per make personal attacks. And I looked upon that as a general attack on what individual members of council were thinking at the time. So that was why I requested that it be removed. It is inappropriate, I believe, to say that uh, you're not, that in this particular case, it was saying that I didn't trust what the officials were saying. That was never what I said. And I do not believe that that kind of sentence should remain in the minutes. If you want to remain it, then it needs to be rewritten so that it doesn't do a personal attack on a council member. There is nowhere in there that it mentions anybody's name. No, it, it was doesn't. A but if statement. you were in the meeting, we know that that, that sentence was placed in there because it was a personal attack on me, even though my name is not mentioned, and I do not want it in there. You could make a public response in this meeting that you don't agree with that being it? I just did. Okay. So, okay. Any other discussion? So we have to approve it by vote? Well, you're going you're gonna to need a, if she wants that put in, you're going to have to have an amendment. Right. She's asking if that can be done. Is that yes. something that can be done, like in the future, or or, or do you want to amend it for well, that? Well, I would like that sentence put back in there because, like I said, it was discussed during the meeting, and I think that's important okay. to note that it was discussed. So, that does everybody understand what uh, Reed is asking? Okay. I think the best the best course of action probably would be an amendment, a motion, a second for an amendment. And then that there was a two-part thing then too also was that I would like to see strikethroughs and then maybe different colored text in the future when something is amended from the original minutes because sometimes I read the original minutes and I think okay that's what's going to be in there and then I come back and look at the amended and something's gone. I was like wait what happened to that? So. I think that would be fair to, to see what is being taken out and added. <coughs> okay, so I'm going to ask for an amended motion to include what Ms. Purnell has stated. She'd like that statement put back in the minutes, and then in future, in the future, she would like them noted in a different way so that they can clearly be seen as to whether they were put in or taken out. Basically, is what she's saying. Yes. Okay. Can I make a motion to my own motion? Or can I make the yeah. yeah. Okay, so I will make that motion. I need a second. I'll second it. Thank you, Barbara. Now we can vote. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Bernier. Yes. Mr. Brackbill. Yes. Miss Cleeton. Yes. Miss Dan. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Miss McKean. Yes. Miss Purnell. Yes. Miss Sedgwick. Yes. Miss Tosti Vasey. Absolutely not. Next is the Stover McLaughlin invoice. We have to approve the original motion. That was the amendment. So we have to approve the minutes in general, right? Is that my? Is that correct? Yes. I'm seeing some yeses. Okay. So now we need a motion and a second to approve the original minutes. I'll make that motion. I'll second it, Dan. Okay, Mr. Bernier. Yes. Mr. Brackbill. Yes. Miss Cleeton. Yes. Miss Dan. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Miss McKean. Yes. Miss Purnell. Yes. Miss Sedgwick. Yes. Miss Tosti Vasey. No. Next is the Stover McLaughlin invoice, March of 2024. Need a motion and a second and then discussion. I'll make the motion. Right I can second it, but Dan. Okay, discussion. I just had a brief question. Is um, and Ralph, maybe this is for you. Are you the one that approves all of these, or does it just go right to um, being paid? Just curious. I look it over and see which which account it should be addressed. Uh, some are the general fund. Some might be water related or parks related, what have you. 
So I look it over from that perspective. Okay, great. Thank you very I, much. I do too. Uh, if he doesn't, Barb, I do a lot of them where I'll, I'll do that too. So I wanted you to know. <laughs> well, great. No, thank you. I just never asked that question. I wonder too, doesn't Lori sort of keep an eye on that as well? After you two say, okay, she triple yeah. checks what you got. Yeah, she, she, she wants to know what fund it comes out of and all that. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? Mr. Bernier? Yes. Mr. Brackbill? Yes. Ms. Cleeton? Yes. Ms. Dan? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Ms. McKean? Yes. Ms. Purnell? Yes. Ms. Sedgwick? Yes. Ms. Tosti Vasey? Yes. Next is the reports. <clears throat> First is the mayor, is a proclamation. Thank you. <clears throat> A Pennsylvania 811 Safe Digging Month proclamation. Whereas the month of April 2024 is recognized as Pennsylvania 811 Safe Digging Month, and the initiative sponsored by Pennsylvania 811, a utility notification information center with 52 years of continuous service to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And whereas Pennsylvania 811 received a million excavation notifications in 2023, over 3,000 construction projects in coordinate PA, and transmitted approximately 6 million notifications to their member facility owners and operators, allowing essential utility and construction crews to provide vital underground services and repair of critical infrastructure to communities throughout Pennsylvania. And whereas contacting 811 at least three business days prior to digging, a homeowner or contractor is connected to a unique service that notifies the appropriate underground utility operators in the municipality in which the work will be performed. And whereas by notifying 811 of their intent to dig, the homeowner or contractor is knowingly helping to protect the underground utilities themselves, the work crew, and their neighbors from any unsafe digging practices with their community. And whereas upon re receiving the notification from Pennsylvania 811, the facility owners and operators disperse to the said work site to mark the appropriate location of their underground utilities with lines, flags, paints, or both to establish an 18 inch tolerance zone of the outside wall or edge of their line and facility. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Buddy Johnson, Mayor of the Borough of Belfont, Pennsylvania, in support of the Pennsylvania Underground Utility Line Protection Law, encourage all Pennsylvanians to visit the Pennsylvania 811 website for information about digging safely. Thank you. Next is junior council member report, Mr. Larson. Uh, yes, so my, sh my report today is pretty short. Uh, we're in that long stretch from the end of the year activities. So right now the fourth quarter has just begun and we're operating on a normal schedule. Uh, we have a student store that just opened that's uh, student made and student ran. So it's really exciting for us because it's one of the first that's ever been in our school district. Um, in addition, the underclassmen prom is scheduled for May 4th. And that's all I have for today. Thank you, Mr. Larson. Uh, next is the Office of Community Affairs. The report was submitted by Ms. Thompson. Um, anybody have any questions relative to that? Uh, she has all her dates in there. Okay, that's it for reports. Uh, next is the current and old business. <clears throat> On Saturday, April 6th, Belfont Borough staff will demonstrate the operation of our compost bagging equipment the borough recently purchased with the assistance of DEP 902 grant. This demonstration will occur at the Musser Lane composting site near the compost pad. Borough residents may show up anytime between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. to see the equipment in operation and learn how the borough is generating its compost from residents like you. 
Anyone that stops by will receive a free 35 pound bag of compost to take home with you. <coughs> Again, that's gonna be this Saturday, April 6th, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Musser Lane Compost Facility. Next is the shade tree planting. Trees are to be delivered on Wednesday, April 10th, and planted on Friday, April 12th. Again, the trees will be delivered on Wednesday, April 10th, and planted on Friday, April 12th. Um, Mr. Stewart already discussed the updated traffic light at Parkview Heights. Okay, Parkview Boulevard, excuse me, and Zion Road. I just wanted to add that the uh, the brush containers, where this pickup will start. Is it the sixth? Uh, this this Wednesday. This Wednesday, the third. Along with uh, you discussed the uh, the bagging at the Musser Lane. This is the official weekend that it opens up from noon or from 8 a.m. until 11:45 or noon, and and this is the first week to set your uh, brush and grass containers at the curbside for pickup on your normal uh, collection day. Just wanted to remind the residents of that. Is that okay. a normal collection day or is it a different day? It's the brush and grass is a, it's a, it's a typical day. It's in the ordinance that it's on Wednesdays. Ralph, you might want to mention about the leaf collection. Uh, <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, we, you know, a few years ago, we started doing a spring leaf collection just to clean and help people clean up the yards and that kind of thing. We're, we're working on a schedule for that and we'll get that out to everybody. But we're working with our public works department. We will be doing it when we'll schedule it and get that out, that, those dates out to everybody. And that, that's usually done the same day as their uh, refuse pickup? Yes. Typically that follows the? Yes, so okay. the, they, they, the leaf collector truck follows, you know, basically the garbage truck route for your, your, your normal pickup, so thank leaf, you. Leaf and grass? Yeah. The, the leaf the leaf pickup would only be a few days it'll be one week max yes. uh, for the spring and yes okay that's i think everything under current and old business new business uh, we talked about this the addition to the fee schedule for compost bags at musser lane i need a motion and a second to approve the addition of a fee of five dollars per bag compost bag to the Belfont Borough fee schedule. I'll make that motion, Brackville. I'll, I'll second, second it, Clayton. <laughs> okay, go ahead. We'll call. Uh, Mr. Bernier? Yes. Mr. Brackville? Yes. Ms. Clayton? Yes. Ms. Dan? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Ms. McKean? Yes. Ms. Purnell? Yes. Ms. Sedgwick? Yes. Ms. Tosti Basie? Yes. All right, that's it under new business. Um, prior to adjournment, uh, Belfont Borough Council held an executive committee meeting that was relative personnel matters prior to this meeting. At this time, I'm gonna call for an adjournment of the Belfont Borough Council business meeting.